This is S23 Ultra, and this is the iPhone 14 Pro. In this video, we're gonna be doing another real day in the life review, putting the camera, battery life, and all the little changes to the test to see if they actually matter. Getting a little bit of a late start on the day, it's 4.42 p.m. The S23 Ultra is starting this video at 76%. This one does not look that amazing, I will be honest. This milk is like, not the vibe. <laughs> Coffee was disappointing, but the day is certainly not. It's beautiful out. A few weeks ago, I filmed the S22 Ultra versus the 14 Pro, same like day in life format. And one of the things that I talked about in that video was that the video quality is often better on the iPhone in comparison to Samsung, but this year they completely changed the sensor. It is now a 200 megapixel sensor for better or for worse. We'll test it through this video and see. But one of the things with the updated sensor is that we now get a lot of stabilization in video, like supposedly better video stabilization. You can dynamically change the 200 megapixels if you want it to be pixel binned, like combining a lot of pixels into one larger pixel for better low light performance, or if you want the 200 megapixels to print something. 14 Pro does not have that option. It just has that 48 megapixel sensor, which is kind of the middle ground. For printing a really big picture, probably S23 Ultra is gonna be the move. It's 5.05 p.m. The S23 Ultra is at 72%, and the iPhone 14 Pro Max is at 26%. We're at a bookstore, which is one of my favorite things of all time. But I feel like video quality is only as good as audio quality. Like, we'll all deal with bad visual a little bit, but if the audio is bad, it's an immediate ick. <laughs> um, so, I wanted to set the audio quality, and this would be like facing the camera and then going away from the camera. That's what happens with the audio. I think in general, iPhones have had the best like audio quality in the past, so I obviously can't hear it right now live. So you're kind of going to have to be my ears on this if it sounds better or worse let me know the iphone 14 pro max has a completely flat display this year they've changed the build very slightly so it's a little bit of a less curved display which means better durability less accidental touches the 10x zoom is amazing because of the extra lens but even 20x is like usable zoom but then i question if people actually care about zoom or if the primary function is a 1x so let me know in the comments if it's more important for you to have like the best video quality for 1x or if you'd rather have like the versatility of pretty good video quality for 1x and then incredible 20x. Fun fact, when I was a kid, my dream job was to be an author. I wanted to like write something like this. I feel like that's one of the reasons why I still love bookstores and why I love YouTube so much and like making these videos because I think storytelling is like at the forefront of all of those things where like to be a good author is to be a good storyteller. And I think to be a good YouTuber is to also be a good storyteller. The kids section has so many more wholesome books. Like the adult section is like how to optimize every second of your life. And the kids section is like, and I love you book. Oh, this is actually so cute. It's like all the different times that the person loves their kid. I have a question for you. This like blew my mind the first time I heard it. When do you think a photo is taken? When the shutter button is clicked initially or when you lift your finger? I thought it was when you click the shutter button, but in actuality, I just had like a meeting with someone that works on all the photo stuff for Samsung. And they said it's when you release your finger because when you're clicking it, the phone doesn't know yet if you're gonna hold down and turn it into a video or if it's gonna be a burst shot. So it has to use the action at the end of the click, which is I think one of the reasons why people often think that there's shutter lag on the phone. But separately, also sometimes, even when I release my finger, it takes a little bit longer to actually take the photo, which leads to sometimes missing the moment or blurry light or kind of like this unintentional light painting that we don't want. And that's an issue that I don't have on the 14 Pro or Pro Max. Using one phone to film the other like an absolute pro. I don't have high belief in myself that I whoa, can whoa, catch whoa. it. You gotta catch it. Really? Okay, you gotta fine. catch it. Right, guys. I'll get pure pressure into catching it. <laughs> Three. Three. You got it. My number one. Look at Wow, actually, oh, really good. Better than the coffee from earlier. <laughs> Is this redemption? Redemption arc happening right now. It's not coffee, but we'll take it. 623 S23 Ultra is at 65% and the iPhone 14 Pro Max is at 22%. Tomorrow morning, one of my good friends is coming over for breakfast. I actually think it's like the wholesomest plan. We're gonna make breakfast together. So I just went out and picked up like some eggs and muffins. 
the breakfast food and while I'm eating dinner because I cannot leave my brain without stimulation, I opened up Nebula to watch a video and there's a video on here called I Ditch Calendar Blocking, Here's Why. And I'm a big believer in calendar blocking, so this is challenging my beliefs. Calendar blocking is really beneficial because it gives you that bird's eye view. It really allows you to see how you're balancing out your life. I noticed that the iPhone 14 Pro Max just has better speakers in my opinion. I feel like they sound more dynamic and full. But other than that, I feel like the decision between S23 Ultra and iPhone 14 Pro Max is really a decision of ecosystem system and then different camera preferences. So like if you really care about iMessage and HomePod and all the little ways that all the Apple products work together, then it's not gonna matter how amazing the S23 Ultra is, you're probably still gonna buy the 14 Pro Max. And conversely, if you don't really care about that, then I think the decision really becomes about camera because I think that the S23 Ultra has a lot of really diverse camera features that the iPhone 14 Pro Max just doesn't have. Either way, Nebula looks great on both of them and Nebula in general is awesome. It's actually a platform that I'm building with a lot of my creator friends. It allows us to kind of post videos on there that are not only ad free, but maybe a little bit different than what we'd normally post on YouTube in terms of like getting to experiment more. And we also have original shows, which are like video essays slash like documentaries about different topics. I just started watching Edith, which to be honest, I watched it because of tech glasses, but then I was pulled in by the incredible storytelling and I learned a lot about marketing as well as like niche sunglass facts. And I feel like a common question that I actually get a lot is how I make these videos. Like how do I edit them, film them, etc. And I'm working right now on a class with Nebula all about that because we also have something called Nebula classes, which are basically classes taught by fellow creators. So you can learn things from like music theory and how to write a song to how to do a quick turnaround style video like Renee Ritchie. And right now, if you use my code, you can actually get all of that for under $3 a month, which is crazy. So if you wanna check it out, I'll leave a link below. Thank you so much to Nebula for sponsoring this video. Thank you to you for watching it. If you wanna check out the S23 Ultra's full day in the life review, you can click right here.